In my last video about Nubian pharaohs in Old Kingdom Egypt, I got some really insightful feedback, not only concerning how I should present this information better in the future, but also how to ensure clarity with the inclusion of historical context and specificity. Hopefully over time I can perfect this model. And this is important, especially when tackling topics such as North African history in general, because there can be a lot of controversy surrounding it. So today, I wanted to dive into some of the feedback and give context and more understanding when it comes to topics like these. What up African world, it's home team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Today, I'll be discussing three separate but similar topics. These topics will include the different outlooks on Diodorus concerning the interpretation of his work, the Nubian civilization of Tasseti, and the discussion surrounding the ethnic origin of writing in the Nile Valley. This video is presented by you guys, who added some valuable critique and insight on these topics. I'll first discuss the critiques that followed after I presented my position on these three topics. Then I'll try to present them again in a way that shows full context and clarity for the audience. And please continue to express your views on the topic as it only works to improve everyone's historical understanding. I think one of, if not the primary critique of my use of Diodorus and Herodotus as it concerns the Nile Valley is that they're simply unreliable. In my own eagerness to explore what they had to say, I didn't at all make clear the controversy behind them. Diodorus and Herodotus do have questionable statements concerning Nile Valley history, and at times, they're both considered an outright unreliable source on Nile Valley history, and even some other histories in general. The idea I took away from some of you guys is that we shouldn't take the word of both these historical figures at face value when it comes to Nile Valley history specifically. Some statements that Dodorius makes can be seen as contradictory, and even the individuals he relies on are called into question. So let's first address this critique. And once again, I'll try to make my position clear and provide necessary nuance. First and foremost, there are some scholars who question whether Diodorus actually traveled to Egypt in the first place. But on the contrary, there are other sources that actually provide a time in which he visits Egypt. So I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. But my position is that Diodorus traveled to Egypt. I do agree with the general idea of the controversy surrounding Diodorus' work. However, the specific quotes used from Diodorus concerning Nubia does not just exist in his own personal account. And that's the primary reason why I wanted to present and explore Diodorus' account as a matter of intrigue, not because it can stand alone at face value, but because it's married with another African tradition. But I certainly failed in articulating that properly in previous videos, and by inviting your feedback, I was able to realize how the information was being internalized. Here is a quote from Diodorus that's in question. They say that the Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Nubians, Osiris having been the leader of the colony, and the larger part of the customs of the Egyptians are they hold Nubian, the colonists still preserving their ancient manners. For instance, the belief that their kings are gods, the very special attention which they pay to their burials, and many other matters of a similar nature are Nubian practices. Many other things are also told by them concerning their own antiquity and the colony which they sent out that became the Egyptians. For clarity purposes, Diodorus claims he spoke with an individual in Egypt, or at least we can allude to that because he says they say in his account. This individual, or perhaps several persons within the Nile Valley, basically told him that Egyptian culture and civilization came from Nubia. Stanley Burstein, an historian who specializes in ancient history, theorizes that the individual Diodorus may have spoken with were actually Nubians. On the contrary, Thomas Africa, who wrote in the Journal of Near Eastern Studies, suggests 
that Diodorus spoke with Egyptians who sympathized with the rule of the Nubian 25th dynasty and that these Egyptian priests etched in the mind of Diodorus these ideas. Even though Thomas Africa doesn't necessarily address Diodorus' comments directly about the antiquity of Nubian civilization over Egypt and the precepts of Egyptian civilization being Nubian, he does seem to call into question anything that relates to a Nubian paradigm in Egypt. The idea I suppose from these Egyptian priests was to centralize Nubia in the historical narrative because the 25th dynasty of Egypt was the golden age, especially for Egyptian priests. I think Thomas said it right when he said the following, without confirmation in Egyptian sources, no oral tradition preserved by Herodotus or Diodorus can be received without suspicion. And this prerequisite, if you will, is primarily why the inclusion of Diodorus' comments on Nubia specifically is not only worthy of note, but worthy of consideration. Because I believe this is exactly what we see. Anything else quoted by Diodorus that cannot be confirmed with Egyptian sources has to be received with suspicion, as Thomas says. According to the Encyclopedia of African History and Culture, Egyptian sources have confirmed the comments of Diodorus, making it relevant to the discussion. The Encyclopedia of African History and Culture tells us the following. Although Egypt was a caste-based society, the people of Tasseti, who according to legend invaded Egypt and began the dynastic period, were known as Mesnu and supposedly did metalwork with copper. Now, there does exist a narrative that these Mesnu blacksmiths were possibly ancient Semites who entered into Egypt through the south and conquered the region. It's important to mention that, but a more accepted position is that the principal inhabitants of Tasseti were Nubians. This group, according to the legend, conquered Egypt, or at least a large portion of it, and began the dynastic period. Now, in my personal opinion, the encyclopedia may have gotten this information from Ernest Wallace Budge, a principal Egyptologist in the early 20th century who claimed to have seen an Egyptian tradition in hieroglyphs that stated that the Mesnu were a cult of Horus from the south who founded a settlement in Egypt that continued into the latest times. Now, perhaps the editors of the Encyclopedia of African History and Culture saw fit to associate the South with Tasseti and the founding of a settlement which continued into the latest times as a dynasty. But I'm not actually sure if they reviewed this information from Wallace himself or got it from another source. Wallace is the only person I personally know of, so I'll leave that up to you guys. Regardless, I would think this Egyptian tradition would, at the very least, qualify as confirmation for Thomas Africa who questions the integrity of Diodorus' sources. The antiquity of Tasseti over other Nile Valley kingdoms or settlements has also come into question. It's certainly possible that other kingdoms were contemporary with Tasseti, as some Egyptologists suggest. And again, for clarity, I have a tendency to give weight to African oral tradition and present it as primary, which can lead to some issues in some areas. And so, it's important that you guys are made aware that my favorable consideration of African oral tradition is the foundation of my historical perspective. As a student of history, it's my historical style, if you will. That being said, there exist about two positions concerning the antiquity of the Tasseti kingdom or kingdoms within that region. One is that it's simply contemporary as far as dates with other states in the Nile. The other which according to oral tradition, literally birthed dynastic Egypt, thus making it a parent state. Anyway, what does this have to do with the unreliable Diodorus? Well, in my personal opinion, the popular saying is true, a broken clock is right twice a day. Yes, Diodorus is somewhat unreliable, and his account of African history can be seen as broken or influenced, if you will. However, when we marry the information from the comments of the famous Egyptologist Wallace Budge and the Encyclopedia of African History and Culture, or in other words, Egyptian tradition, his account immediately carries more weight. I'm not saying Diodorus is right or that his sources aren't biased. I'm saying that Diodorus is indeed following a tradition that does exist in the Nile Valley, 
and in fairness, his account can now be viewed with less scrutiny because it meets the standard cross-examination. This is why I decided his input was noteworthy, and any perceived legitimacy I granted Diodorus in my videos was only in the context of his union with African tradition. So again, Diodorus by himself, as it concerns the Nile Valley, is unreliable. But Diodorus, married with pre-existing African tradition, is worthy of further consideration and has value, more than what we may like to prescribe. Another critique some of you had had more to do with an older video I did concerning the origin of Nile Valley writing. A few people questioned why I didn't bring up the early writings at Abydos and its obvious significance to the discussion on the origin of hieroglyphs. The short answer is because that wasn't at all the purpose of the video and I may have failed to articulate that on a satisfactory level. The video was concerned about the phenotypical or ethnic origin of writing in the Nile Valley. The video is titled who invented writing in the Nile Valley? If the video swayed from the purpose of the title, then I can certainly understand the critique. But for me, the mention of Abydos, in my opinion, has little value concerning the ethnicity of the inventors. One can make the argument that because Abydos is in Egypt, that means Egyptians invented it. Unfortunately, history doesn't work like that. Tasseri is largely known today, historically speaking, as an Egyptian gnome or city, but in ancient times, the principal inhabitants were believed to have been Nubians. This is what the general history of Africa has to say about Tasseri. The Egyptian province situated between Thebes and Aswan was long called Tasseri, the land of the bow in ancient Egyptian, and the hieroglyphic documents traditionally apply this term to what we call Nubia. So based on this information, we know that Nubians were present historically in what we today call Egypt. That's why the question of ethnicity is important as it concerns the origin of Nile Valley writing. It could have been an Egyptian who invented hieroglyphs or a Nubian. Both are very possible. However, this topic can be controversial because by the time writing was invented in this region, the so-called Egyptians and or Nubian identities may have not even existed yet. There was considerable cultural and perhaps even familial continuity in those times between what we would call Upper Egypt and Lower Nubia. So it is possible that my video on the ethnicity of the inventors is totally irrelevant, but that's a different topic altogether. I'm proposing that considering Diodorus's account married with the face hieroglyph which to me looks like a typical Nubian or Sudanese person today, that dual historical reference makes conjecture safe. But I do understand some of the opposition as some assumed that I was simply taking his word at face value. Face value would be a total reliance on him. What I attempted to do was to express that his account, despite the controversy, can be married with actual observation and history and is a valid form of historical analysis. Now in general, my previous video relied too heavily on Greek accounts and I did not marry it with other historical accounts from the continent itself. I believe that with the inclusion of other accounts from the continent, along with Diodorus and Herodotus, that may have painted a better picture as it concerns my position and proper historical perspectives. So with videos like these, I'm hoping to get better so there can be no confusing ahistorical narratives floating around. Ultimately, I want to ensure that the videos that are intended to be more explorative and theoretical in nature are made and presented with more clarity, providing unambiguous objectives and a fuller scope. Well, I'm all out, guys. I'm looking forward to the dialogue in the comments below. And if you have any new information, please do not hesitate to share it as it only works to improve our collective edification. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.